got a question here that tests your knowledge of aromatic chemistry. So it starts off with two structures for benzene, A and B, and you've got to draw two diagrams to show the difference in terms of orbital overlap between those two structures. And then in the explanation you have to give, you must spell the appropriate technical terms correctly. We've now got a table of enthalpy changes for the reactions of cyclohexene and benzene with hydrogen and using the information we have to suggest and explain which of those two structures A and B is a better representation of benzene. Part B is an application of what you'll have covered in class with regards to benzene and its electrophilic substitution reactions. The start of the question, you're told that it can undergo nucleophilic substitution. And we're given a mechanism, but we have to add some curly arrows. Part C is asking you to compare, I suppose, your knowledge of the reaction of benzene with bromine to this example here. We've got to come up with an equation to show the formation of the electrophile. Part D then gets us to use that information that we've learned in B and C and we have to apply it to this big synthetic route question. So we've got to complete the boxes in the in the flow chart to suggest formulae for the reactants involved in the synthesis of compound D which is just under here. We don't need that just yet, so if I go back here, so have a look at the first question. How do you change this chemical into this chemical here? We're then told that this gets turned into that by the reaction with F minus. Then we've got to convert this into this in the presence of FeBr3. And then the final part of the synthesis is going from this chemical here to compound D. So what are we going to have to react this with to make D? And now a quick calculation. In the synthesis of compound D, from the 1,3-diaminobenzene, 1.73 grams of D was prepared. The overall percentage yield of compound D is 40%. We're told the MR of D is 346.0. And we have to work out what mass of 1,3-diaminobenzene would be needed to carry out that synthesis. And the last part of the question, it's a drug synthesis question. We're told that compound D has been developed for um, a drug to treat heart conditions when compound D is prepared in the synthesis and given to patients only 25% of the dose is effective. Explain why and suggest how the synthesis of D might be changed to make the dose more effective. So I'll just quickly go back to the structure of D because that's important to help answer the question. So the diagrams first, structure A, if you think about it as three separate carbon-carbon double bonds, so think about ethene, that's what you would draw for ethene, so we just draw three of those. And for B, it's the usual delocalized electron cloud above and below the ring. And then the explanation, so p orbitals overlap to form pi bonds. In structure A, the pi bonds are localised between two carbons. And in structure B, the pi bonds are delocalised over all six carbons. And the quality of written communication mark was going for spelling the word delocalised correctly. So which is the best representation, structure A or B? Well, it's B because the enthalpy change of hydrogenation of benzene at minus 208 is less than three times that one. 
and that's due to the stabilizing effect of those delocalized electrons. The curly arrows that we had to add, so we would have a pair of electrons going from this bond here and they'd be attracted to that N plus and the other curly arrow from the lone pair on the F minus to the positive charge on this. Part C, write an equation to show the formation of the electrophile that reacts with benzene in reaction one. So, you see in red there, I've written what you probably have in your notes, Br2 plus FeBr3 gives FeBr4 minus and Br plus. So, we essentially want this Br plus equivalent to be this CH3 twice CH because that is what substitutes onto the ring. So it's this plus FeBr3. Remember this is a halogen carrier so that bromine is going to go onto there and form this FeBr4 minus ion and there's the electrophile. The substances in the boxes now. So how do you go from this to this? Well that's a diazonium ion. So this is straight out of the notes, you react it with nitrous, HNO2, nitrous acid. This is reaction B, going from this to this. And then to go from this to this, that's actually reaction C. So we need to put this structure here, we will need to put it onto there. So. Because it's based on reaction C, we need a bromine at either side because that's where the attachment's going to be. And so that is what we would react it with. And then to make D, we essentially need to form an amide. So we're going to join, we're going to form an amide bond here with something that's going to give us this structure here. Well, that's obviously going to be a carboxylic acid. And so the unknown structure would be that. The calculation now. So first thing you would do, calculate the moles of compound D that's going to be prepared. That's mass over MR, 0 0.005. The moles of 1,3-diaminobenzene required, factoring in that 40%, well, I've divided by 40 and then scaled up to 100%. So we're going to need these moles here. And then to get the mass, I just multiply by the MR, which is 108. And it gives an answer of 1.35 grams. So why is this drug only 25% effective? It's because compound D has two chiral centers. So there are four possible optical isomers, only one's effective, one out of four, hence that 25%. How could you modify the synthesis to make it more effective? Well, I've gone for a chiral pool synthesis, or you could use a natural chiral molecule as a starting material. Uh, you could use enzyme catalysis, anything like that.